Welcome back to Tiny House and Off Grid Resources, the channel where we rebuild, recycle, and refurbish. I've just had a birthday. For my birthday, I bought myself a plasma cutter, so I've been getting all artistic. I've got an old LPG propane container here, and I'm going to turn it into a gorgeous little bespoke fireplace. With a plasma cutter, it's so easy to cut freehand holes in pretty much anything from sheet steel up to half inch thick steel bar. But plasma cutters don't like rusty steel or paint, so you'll see that I ground a couple of little starting points with a grinder, just so that I could get through the paint and the rust at the start of each cut. I've rolled up a band of 50mm by 3 and I'm tapping that into place now to make the opening where the door is going to fit. I'll square it all up and tack it in place. Notice that I've still got that scabby old ring on the bottom of the LPG propane cylinder. I'm leaving that there until the job's almost finished so that I've got a nice flat piece to sit it on. Now this is the damper. It cuts back on the draw and makes your stove a beautiful economical wood saver. So I've made that as a separate unit and I'm about to tap that into place, tack it all up and weld it in. This is the double burning chamber where the hot gases get another chance to be combusted. I'm now welding that carefully into place. And after a big clean up with a grinding disc, I'm ready to start tacking the cook plate on the top. I've turned the stove upside down to keep everything nice and square. There's a lot of seam welding around these components, but soon everything will be welded together and I can start on the interesting parts, the window and the vents and the door catch. Not a good earth, let's put it somewhere else. I weld it in segments, moving around to give it a chance to cool down so that there's no distortion in the finished article. Here I am again with the plasma, making the door catch. A nice freehand arc along here. And I'll just tidy that up on the grinder.
matching pivot holes in the catch itself and in the door. So I've carefully lined those up so that it sits at a nice 90 degrees when it's closed. And I'll drill two holes. One is for the pivot, the other is for a stop so that it doesn't drop down when the door's open. The door's a nice sturdy 6mm plate, there'll be no distortion in this fireplace. Here we go, stainless steel fittings. And the door catch fits onto what they call a snick, which is a little ramp. A small piece of steel attached to the bodywork of the stove with an angle that you see here. And a small groove that the catch will fit into when it's closed. That's got a slight angle on the front edge so that the further it goes in, the tighter it gets. I'm going to put a 90 degree bend where that chalk line is. So we'll cut it off at the back here. You can see how much faster the plasma is than a cutting disc on the grinding wheel. And long term, it saves a fortune in consumables. Smack with a hammer to bend that. <clears throat> Check that it fits, and I'm going to use a small magnet to hold it in place while I weld it. I use these magnets all over the place. I've got a real selection that I use for all sorts of different jobs. Always take the magnet off before completing the weld because magnets don't like excessive heat. Some slight adjustments just to get it perpendicular and I'll fully weld that. And give it a test. What do you think? It's pretty good, eh? Right, time to turn the stove into an art piece. I've decided that I'm going to give this thing a bit of a special base. This stove is going to be the Baba Yaga model. Drop a comment down below if you know what I mean by the Baba Yaga model. You'll see. I'm making eight of these and they're getting trimmed off real short like toenails. Because hey, that's what I'm making. So these little toenails will get joined on to the toes. Eight times. And this is what I'm making. So the 
the stove's now complete, time to give it a quick paint job. The high temperature black comes out as a gloss, but after a firing it turns a matte black. And then I put a slight metallic dusting over the top and I end up with a lovely metallic black stove. It's upside down at the moment so that I can ensure that I get plenty of paint on all the bits that you don't see. And then I'll turn it over and make sure to get plenty of paint on all the bits you do see. So there we go. If recycling, reusing and rebuilding is your type of thing, why not subscribe to Tiny House and Off Grid Resources? We'll see you in the next video.